Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we have been designing this website using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And in the previous video, we completed designing this desktop version of our website. Now in this video, we will start making it responsive. So let's get started. Right, so here I have reduced the width of the browser window and uh, let's start writing the code for making it responsive. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to make some changes to this navbar. Now if you take a look at this, uh, we can see that we have a logo on the left side and then we have these uh, nav menus. Now what we're going to do is in the mobile version, we will have this logo on the left side and on the right side, we will have an icon for displaying these menu items. And when we click on the icon, we will display these menu items as a pop-up. So let's do that. So let's go to the styler CSS file and uh, let's scroll down and uh, let's add a media query. So here let's type at media and uh, let's set the max width to 600 pixels. Now whenever the width of the browser window is less than 600 pixels, all the styles inside this block will be applied to our design. Now here the first thing we need to do is we need to hide these nav items from the nav bar. So if you go back to the HTML file, here we can see we have this division of the class of nav items and in that we have these menu items. So let's hide this division. So here inside this media query, I'll just type dot nav items and let's set the display to none. And it is not being hidden. So let's see what's the problem. Let's scroll up. And uh, here we can see for the nav items, we have this selected nav. So we also need to add nav in front of nav items. So we basically need to add more specificity. So here we can see we have nav, nav items. So let's scroll down. And uh, here let's type nav, nav items. Now we can see that the nav items are hidden. Now the next thing we will do is uh, if we go back to the desktop version, here we can see for the body we have a different background color. Now for the mobile version, we will set the background color of the body to white. So let's type body. And let's set the background color to white. And now let's go ahead and style the nav element. So let's type nav. And if you scroll up to the desktop version, here we can see for the nav, we have this width of 900 pixels. Now for the mobile version, we need to reduce the width. So let's scroll down. And here let's type width. And let's set the width to a calc function. And in that we'll just type 100% minus and uh, 30 pixels and now we can see we have the correct width we have 30 pixels of gap between the edges now the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to create a menu icon over here so for that let's go back to the html file and here after the nav items division let's create a division with the class of menu icon and in that we will have an img tag and in the src let's type images forward slash menu icon dot svg and here we can see we have the menu icon displayed. Now if you go back to the desktop version, here also we have the menu icon displayed. So let's hide it from the desktop version. So here in the styler CSS file, let's go outside the media query and let's add a comment. I'll just type hidden items. And here let's type nav menu icon and let's set the display to none. And now we can see in the desktop version, we don't have the menu icon displayed. Now let's reduce the width of the browser window. And here in the mobile version, we need to have the menu icon displayed. So here let's type nav menu icon and let's set the display to block and we'll set the cursor to pointer and we'll just reduce the height of this uh, icon so let's tap nav menu icon img and uh, let's set the height to 30 pixels and we'll also bring it to the center by typing display of flex right now let's go ahead and style this header now for the header we need to have these uh, elements on the top and then we need to have this image at the bottom so if you go back to the desktop version and if you take a look at the header here we can see for the container of the header we have set the display to flex and uh, that's why these elements are one next to the other now what we need to do is we need to set the flex direction to column so that these elements are one below the other so let's copy this selector from here and let's scroll down and uh, let's paste it over here and here let's type flex direction and let's set it to column now if you scroll up here we can see that we have also set a height so 
here we can see for the container we have set a height of 100% and if you go to the header we can see that we have set a max height of 800 pixels. Now we need to set the max height to fit content so that it will have the height of the content inside the header. So let's scroll down and uh, let's type header and let's set the max height to fit content and we also need to set the height to fit content so let's type height fit content and now we can see that we have the correct height right now let's change the height of this image so the image is inside this uh, right division over here and that we have the image so let's type header right img and let's set the height to 350 pixels now this featured content is displayed on top of the image that's because we have set a negative margin so if we go to the featured section here we can see that we have set a margin top of minus 90 pixels so let's go ahead and change that here i'll just add a comment i'll just type featured section and here let's type hash featured and let's set the margin top to let's try 40 pixels and that looks all right now let's go ahead and add some padding top to this header because here we can see that we have the nav bar displayed on top of the heading so let's go back to the header and uh, here let's type padding top and uh, let's set it to 160 pixels and that looks all right now for all the container divisions let's go ahead and add a padding so here we can see that we have this container division for all the content so let's type container and let's set a padding of 0 for top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right all right now let's style this heading we need to reduce the font size of this heading so let's type h1 because we have an h1 for the main heading and let's set the font size to 40 pixels right now we need to have these two buttons one below the other so let's type buttons and in this buttons division we have these two buttons this is the first button and this is the second button so let's go ahead and set the flex direction to column and now we can see that the buttons are one below the other right now let's scroll down and uh, here we have these sections now for all the section headings let's add a specific styling now when we are on the mobile version let's go ahead and add an underline for these headings so here let's type section and for the headings we have h2 now for adding the underlines we will use the after selector so let's type section h2 colon colon after and let's set the content to blank and we need to position this after selector relative to this h2 so let's type position relative over here and here let's type position absolute and uh, let's add the background color of black and let's set the width to 30 pixels and let's set the height to 2 pixels and now here we can see we have this line now we need to position it to the bottom so let's type bottom 0 and we need to bring it to the center so let's type left of 50 percent and now it is starting from the center so we have to type transform translate x negative 50 percent and now it is exactly in the center let's also add margin bottom for the h2 and let's set it to 40 pixels and i think that looks all right right now let's display all these logos one below the other so if you go back to the html file here we can see that we have this division of the class of logos and in that we have all these images so we have already set the display to flex so we can go ahead and set the flex direction to column so here let's type featured logos and uh, let's set the flex direction to column and uh, let's set a gap of 40 pixels between the elements and we need to change the size of these images so let's tap featured and let's tap img and uh, let's set the height to 30 pixels and that looks all right and that's it with the feature section now let's go ahead and style this features section now we need to have all these features one below the other so let's add a comment and let's tap features and if you go to the features section here we can see for the features content we have set the display to grid and we have set the grid template columns to 1fr 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 which means three columns now we need to set this to just 1fr so that we have just one column so let's copy this selector and let's scroll down and here let's type grid template columns 
one fr and now we can see that we have just one item in a row now here i think we also have some padding for the sections so let's right click over here and let's click on inspect and let's select a section and here we can see for the section we have this padding so let's remove the left and right paddings from the section for the mobile version so here i'll just type section and let's type padding in line for selecting padding left and padding right and uh, let's set it to zero and now we can see that we don't have any padding left or padding right for the sections right now let's style the testimonial section so here also we have these two columns now we need to bring these elements one below the other so let's target the division so here we have this division with the class of testimonials and in that we have this content division and in that we have the left and the right divisions so let's target this content inside the testimonials so just add a comment testimonials and let's type testimonials content and let's set the flex direction to column and uh, for the left division we have set a max width so let's remove that so if you right click over here and go to inspect if we click on this left division we have set this width of 360 pixels so we need to remove the width so here i just type testimonials content left and let's set the width to 100 percent now for the underline of the testimonials header let's go ahead and bring it to the left side so if we scroll up here we can see that for the section heading we have this after selector for the underline and here we have set the position to left of 50 percent so let's go ahead and copy this code and uh, i'll just paste it down here and here i'll just type testimonials and in that we have this left division and in that we have the s2 and for that we have the after selector so I'll just delete all these uh, properties from here and we'll set the left position to zero and we'll set the transform translate to zero and now we can see we have the underline in the correct position now let's also remove the margin between the heading and this paragraph so let's type testimonials left h2 and let's set the margin bottom to zero right now let's go ahead and bring this court icon to the right side so let's select that we have this pan with a class of court icon so let's type testimonials right court icon and let's set the left position to negative 10 pixels and i think that looks all right and uh, we also have the buttons working all right now let's go ahead and increase the height of this bg element so we have this uh, background element over here which has this pinkish color so i think it is inside the testimonial section so let's go back to the html here we can see inside the testimonials division we have this bg element so in the desktop version we have already added some styles so here we have the bg element let's go ahead and copy these uh, styles from here let's scroll down and let's paste it over here and i'll just remove the unnecessary styles first of all we need to have the height so i'll just set the height to 1900 pixels you can experiment with this value and then for the left and right positions i'll just type 30 pixels and this is how it looks we have the bg element till here so i think that looks all right i'll just delete all the other styles right now let's go ahead and style the pricing section so let's add a comment i'll just type pricing section and if you go back to the html file here we can see we have this division with the class of content and in that we have these plans now we are generating these plans from the javascript file and uh, if you go back to the style or css file and if you scroll up here we can see for the pricing content we have set the grid template columns to 1fr 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 which means three columns so I'll just copy this and let's scroll down and uh, let's paste it down here and uh, i'll just delete these two lines of code and i'll just change this to just 1fr so we have just one column and i think that looks all right now let's go ahead and remove the padding from the left and the right so i just type pricing plan because we have this division with the class of plan and let's type padding in line for selecting padding left and padding right and let's set it to zero and now we can see that we have the correct padding 
and then we have this uh, CTA section and it looks all right. And then lastly, we have this footer. Now for the footer content, we have set the display to flex. So if you go to the content here, we can see that we have set the display to flex. Now we need to set the flex direction to column. So let's start footer and uh, let's start footer content and uh, let's set the flex direction to column. And now we can see that the content of the footer is one below the other. Now this is the right section of the footer. So we need to add flex direction of column to that as well. So if we go back to the HTML file, we can see that we have this division with the class of right and in that we have these links. So let's target that and let's have footer, right and flex direction to column and this is how it looks. And I think we have a lot of gap between these two links. So here we can see in the desktop version, we have set a gap of 40 pixels. So let's reduce it and just copy this and let's paste it down here. And I think it is for the right division. So I just cut this gap from here and I just paste it over here. And uh, let's try a different value. So I think let's try 10 pixels. And I think that looks all right. Now let's also add some margin top for this uh, links division. So here I'll just tap margin top and uh, let's set it to 10 pixels. And uh, I think we'll try 20 pixels. And I think that looks all right. And then lastly, we have this copyright section and it is also a display of flex. So we can just type flex direction to column. So I just have footer, copyright, flex direction, column. And this is how it looks. So with that, we have made our design responsive. Now, the last thing we need to do is uh, we need to add the functionality of this uh, menu icon. So when we click on this menu icon, we want the menu to be displayed over here. And when we click on each of the menu items, we want to be scrolled to that specific location. And we want to have that functionality for these menus as well. So if I click on features, I should be redirected to this section right here. So we will do that in the next video. Right, so that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Wow.